Now, sudden travel bans imposed on South Africa over the Omicron variant have dealt a blow to the already struggling tourism sector. Tourism Minister Lindy Wesisulu has convened meetings with the private sector industry in an effort to get South Africa off the travel, travel red list ahead of the December holidays. The minister is attending the 24th session of the General Assembly of the World Tourism Organization in Spain and joins me now to speak about some of the issues that the various stakeholders that are in attendance will be tackling. Minister, many thanks for joining us this evening. And perhaps let's just start with that, the 24th session, some big, big topics around the impact of COVID-19 on the critical tourism industry. What are some of the big issues that you are looking to break down over the next few days? Well, the... Good evening, uh, to begin with. Um, there are a number of uh, matters that were on the agenda for discussion uh, for the World Tourism Organization. However, the big issue for us coming from Africa, especially coming through South, South Africa, all those countries that connect through South Africa and ourselves, were extremely aggrieved at the fact that uh, we were immediately uh, red-listed by a number of countries that are participant in the conference. They are able to attend the conference and they red list South Africa. And we are, some of our people are unable therefore to attend the conference. So my message to the conference was to protest very strongly about this. The United Nations is an, an international organization that allows all of us to take part in and make sure that we are represented. And therefore, it is counter, it counters everything else we stand for if we are unable to attend those conferences. So we put out a very strong message yesterday to the conference to say it is completely unacceptable for any country who is a member state of the World Organization World, World um, Tourism Organization to put a red um, to put us on on on, red, on the red list. Countries like uh, Botswana, possibly if they'd wanted to attend Zimbabwe, definitely Mozambique was very aggrieved by the fact that they couldn't travel to the to the conference. What is the purpose of coming together to make sure that we can open our borders for travel after the heavy COVID if people are unable to attend? Uh, so that is the message that we sent to them, that we are extremely, extremely unhappy about this. And to clarify the fact that we feel that we're just being um, used as a scapegoat for whatever other prejudice that might exist in the world, because this um, Omicron uh, variant has nothing to do with South Africa, except that we just, our scientists discovered it. It is deliberately being linked to us uh, for purposes that might be useful for you know, express their own prejudice or cut us out of the discussion, we're not sure. But that is the big message we sent out. Our extreme displeasure at the fact that we were red-listed the day before the conference started. Red-listed not only by the British government, red-listed by the Sp uh, uh, Spanish government, which is the host of the World Travel uh, Tourism Organization. That is completely unacceptable, unheard of. Um, and um, we just hope that uh, something will be done by the WTO to make amends and make sure that uh, there is no discrimination, whatever reason, on any lines. Yeah, and it's going to be very important, Minister, and you've mentioned there the British, the United States as well. These are two big tourist uh, opportunities for South Africa, especially now in the summer period. Are you planning on having any meetings with authorities from both those countries? I mean, there's one good thing where we've had the French saying that they'll be lifting their ban on South African travel on Saturday. So that's one uh, good piece of news that we've had come out over the last week. But have you got plans to specifically engage uh, these two countries on a way forward uh, between uh, travel uh, for South Africans and for British and U.S. citizens to and from these countries? Well, we still have one more day of the World um, Tourism Organization at which we'll probably each be given closing, uh, uh, giving closing uh, remarks to the conference. And I want to repeat what I said when we started off. It is completely unacceptable. There is diplomatic immunity for people who attend these conferences. And the reason why there's diplomatic immunity is because we are all part of the World uh, World Trade Organization, which is a part of the United Nations uh, 
uh, assembly, general assembly. And um, it, it just doesn't make sense that we should be um, targeted for this particular mm. variant that, that is known to be in every other part of the world, uh, everywhere else. And there is no travel ban against those countries. Tomorrow is the last day, and I'm hoping that we will be given the opportunity to close and give our closing remarks, because going to each country to try and beg to be allowed in is not part of the spirit of the tra of, of tourism of, uh, organization. Why would we have it if it wasn't to have a common purpose, to open our borders to the extent that it is possible and safe for everybody and make sure that t tourism thrives? There can't be tourism if our borders are closed. No, absolutely, Minister. In the meantime, though, South African businesses can't rely solely on domestic travelers in the festive season. We do know that South Africans are largely constrained because of those negative effects of COVID-19. And we really haven't heard a lot in the last few days uh, from your department in terms of a plan of action in the short to medium term to support these businesses as much as you can. Have there been any engagements around a plan of action? Oh, yes, we have. Number one, we do have a plan of action. And this is something that we uh, indicated uh, in Parliament a few, a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, thereafter, we've been holding meetings with various stakeholders, uh, uh, you know, um, big businesses that uh, have uh, hotels, big businesses that thrive on tourism. And they are on, our, on their knees, basically. And uh, we were hoping that the recovery plan would assist us when we get to this particular stage, uh, recover from, from uh, the devastation that they have experienced. But here we are uh, wanting to sell our plan to the world. We sold our plan to, to the business community in South Africa. But we're finding these impediments that I have indicated. Most of our tourists are, are, are people that come from outside of our country. And I don't know if they will be allowed in or whether we would be allowed to uh, continue our trade in the way that we would have wanted to at this particular time. But tomorrow I want to use this particular uh, uh, period to express our extreme uh, what um, unhappiness about this on behalf of all of those people who waited to get to the pot, to the end of COVID so that they can begin operations. The recovery plan is very clear. It's out there to assist all those industries that need our assistance. But there's very little that we can do when governments lock us out. Uh, so tomorrow is a day on which we will express our concern and make sure that we, we, we put across the message that Omicron is not a South African variant that it has been there in other parts of the world. And the fact that we are discriminated against uh, means that uh, the world has suddenly become um, very, um, what, prejudiced against us mm. uh, for mm. discovering something that they have known, something that they know exists in their own countries. They're not declaring it, but we do know that it exists in other countries. Um, so we are left uh, at a loss and I, I, I believe possibly the organization, World, um, World Tourism Organization itself is at a loss how to explain what is happening. But we are, we've expressed our displeasure. Mozambique has expressed its displeasure. Uh, Zambia has expressed its displeasure. Uh, Kenya has expressed its displeasure. I expressed extreme displeasure because we were targeted as a country mm -hmm. for red listing. Now, Minister, you do find yourself in a very precarious position because at one, on one hand, government has to try as best as it can to contain the effects of the fourth wave, which we have been speaking about hitting in mid-December. And at the same time, you have to ensure that the livelihoods of those in the tourism industry, for example, are kept as best as they can in the difficult times. When you have engagements with the National Coronavirus Command Council, how do you strike a balance in making sure that whatever restrictions are imposed don't already plunge the industry further into a dire situation? I mean, how do you navigate that? Well, thankfully, when the president made his uh, statement just before I left the country to come to, to the to the United Nations World Tourism General Assembly. 
he did indicate that he wasn't imposing any more restrictions on anybody, which is good, which means that we believe that we've got to a point where we need to manage the level at which we are, as opposed to, you know, putting up, uh, putting up our more stringent restrictions around what people should do or should not do. Uh, we did expect a fourth wave, uh, but the, that has not expressed itself in any restrictions that the government has put in place. So we were hoping that uh, we would open up to the extent that it is possible. But opening up, of course, means allowing for international travelers to come into the country. Uh, this is the predicament that we are facing, the strongest predicament. Otherwise, we were hoping that we would use the recovery plan, assist our uh, industry to get back on its feet. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say to them when I get back home to find that we have this additional burden after we've been planning uh, around how we're going to help them get out of this situation. They really are in distress. They really are in need of our help. And to the extent that it was possible for us to indicate our support, we have done that. But we are finding more impediments along the way. Um, I should be back home in the next two days. I will have meetings with them again to navigate around what we what is possible and uh, ensure that we can proceed to give them the support that they need. But the most important support is to put our foot down and say the world is treating us badly and it should not be accepted at all. Absolutely. Minister Lindy Westisulu, who's the Minister of Tourism, giving us some insights on the 24th session of the tourism organization uh, that's being held in Madrid currently, uh, speaking about the deep unhappiness that South Africa is feeling towards uh, being placed on the red list or being banned to travel to some of those countries. She is saying she doesn't know what she's going to be saying when she comes home in terms of meetings and finding a way forward, but hopefully Hopefully, when all those heads come together, uh, when she returns to the South Africa, to South Africa, some plan will be made, and hopefully, she'll be keeping us abreast of those plans that will be announced.